Hey guys, I don't know who wants to hear this, but I have some behind the scenes photos and videos from a Louis Vuitton factory in San Dimas, California. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new to me, my name is Michelle and I am a former Louis Vuitton employee. I used to work on the sales floor and if you are coming back to my channel, welcome back. I have been really excited to get the content for this particular video because when I left Vuitton, I was so pissed off, I just went to my phone and deleted all photos. Well, oops, I didn't know that a couple years later I would be making content for YouTube on Louis Vuitton and my experience there. Well, anyways, long story short, um, after about a year of employment, you're sent to a week-long training, or maybe it's six months of employment. Anyways, you have to have been there for a few months. Then you get sent, sent to this week-long training, it's called induction, where they, um, they drill you on customer service scenarios, words, phrases that you need to say, ways to present things to customers, um, role play, all kinds of really drawn out, brain draining, activities. But also in this week-long training, you do get to take a tour of the facility, the factory in San Dimas, California. So I'm going to share with you some pictures. I'm excited about this to address the myths. The myths, I guess the belief, or shall I say what Vuitton actually tells the consumer that each bag is handcrafted, each bag is made by one artisan and takes 48 hours to complete. At least that is the story, that is the story that I remember them telling us on the floor and uh, a huge reason, now you guys can tell me yes or no if that is a reason that draws you to the brand because you are told that it's handmade. So they have this video that's on their website showing the artisans, the craftsmanship. There is absolutely truth behind this for one. So the factory in San Dimas, California, it's in Southern California, it has actually been there since the late 60s or the early 70s to accommodate the demand for Vuitton in Hollywood, in California, in the US because of the rise of Vuitton in Hollywood. So that factory has been there. And one thing I want to make clear here is the factory is owned and run by Louis Vuitton. So people tend to think that if the bag is not made in France, it is outsourced to another country, it's outsourced to China or Vietnam, or it's just outsourced to a country or a factory that is not specific to Vuitton. And this is not true. This is how Vuitton keeps their quality control. And in fact, when I did visit the factory, the artisans who were running that factory had been with Vuitton, had been with the factory in France for a number of years before they had come over to the US. They are are very specific about their artisans and very specific about their training. I have even heard that they prefer to train artisans that have zero sewing experience so that they come in with a clean slate and don't try to do things the non-Vuitton way. So you'll see some of the photos as I talk about it here. Vuitton advertises, or I'm not sure if they advertise, but this is something that they did teach us to say that each bag is handcrafted, takes 48 hours to make by one artisan. So I do believe that is true for the exotics, things like crocodile bags, trunks, petite malls, um, even capucines. The exotic factories and the higher end leathers, those are the ones that you will find in France. The factory in the US has more of the mainstream bags. So we're gonna take a look at what they have here. Um, I'm gonna show you the uh, Pochette Matisse and a Speedy. So that's something to know. The more exotic bags, the more um, artsy bags are the ones that are made in France. As for the common ones, um, they can come from France, Spain, US, or Italy. Um, here is the station of the Pochette Matisse. It's like a little bay, it's a rectangle bay where they have several different stations set up. Actually, in this picture, there is a diagram of what the station looks like. So I went ahead and made my own version here in Canva so I can walk you through it too, step by step. So there are stations from one to 15 and you can see if you, I zoomed in as much as I can to see what each station was. Now let me um, make clear too that this bay is strictly for assembly. 
So here are different pictures of the bay of the bags assembled in different, um, different stages of their assembly. Here you see the lining and you see different parts of the bag. Well, those are actually cut in a different part of the factory. They're put on this cart and wheeled over to the bay. So in this area here is where they're doing the assembly. I have a little video here. This is how they apply the glazing to the edge of the handbag. If you didn't know, the glazing is the painted area. It actually binds the two pieces of leather together. Another term for it is binding. In Beton, they call it glazing. And as we all know, the pochette Matisse has glazing issues. She is actually working on a leather pochette Matisse. If you haven't heard me say it before, the sales associates prefer that you buy a leather pochette Matisse, even though the canvas one is the most popular. The leather version of the pochette Matisse is the most durable. There are no problems with it, no problems with glazing or cracking. So that is absolutely the one I would recommend. And it's only a few hundred dollars more than buying the canvas version. Okay, not to mention, not to mention, it's more elegant. I think it's more elegant, which makes it more versatile. But you can see her and the woman behind her are glazing the pochette Matisse. All the bags are assembled in this area here from the stitching to the glazing. You'll see in the bay too that there's priming and ovens. So priming is uh, what is done to the materials before it's glazed. Things that need to be primed and glued to the bag are the lining. The lining needs to be glued to the leather. So I believe that is done here as well. And there are different ovens where the product is cured. Okay, as I mentioned too, the uh, material is cut in another portion of the factory. Here you have a piece of leather. So these machines do different things. I believe this machine here is what maps out the leather. And what it's doing is looking for imperfections. If there's an imperfection on the leather, because it's from a cow, you know, the cow might have a dimple or a pimple or um, just something on its skin that seems irregular. They will cut that portion of the leather to be used on a part of the bag that maybe you won't see. So maybe that's like um, in a gusset or at the bottom of the bag, but it definitely won't be on the front of the bag. So they check the skins for imperfections so they can optimize the use of it. And other machines, laser cutting is so precise, they map out each hide so that there's as little waste as possible. So everything, every part of the bag, the front, the back, the sides, the little tabs, the handles, everything is mapped out um, to precision. And here you see some of the leather hides hanging before it gets to the cutting board. Now, the leathers are from uh, what's called a tannery and that is not the same as the factory. That's a whole different facility. So there's a whole supply chain of where all this stuff comes from. From my memory, within this bay, there are probably about three to four people in each bay and um, they might be in charge of several things. So it's definitely not one person working on one bag. And as you see, all the materials, they're cut somewhere else and then brought over. It's not like you're sitting there <laughs> using your scissors, cutting from one cowhide and putting the bag together like you would sew a dress like at home. Your handles, uh, your things are all from different places. So that doesn't mean one bag comes from one cow. Obviously it comes from different pieces and they're treated in other parts of the factory until they get here to this table to this bay to get assembled. Now here we have a lady who is sewing. I have a video of someone sewing the Speedy. Okay, so you can see she's using a sewing machine. Is anyone surprised? Cause I actually, I can't picture someone just stitching this by hand. Um, you would have to be so patient and precise. And it's funny to me on Facebook groups that people are always complaining that one stitch is a little bit like this and they should all be straight. Well, quality control does allow, and this is a, for any brand, quality control does allow a margin of stitches just being maybe a tiny degree off. But as you can see, so she's hand feeding it through the um, sewing machine. So does that, does that mean it's handmade, handmade through the sewing machine? 
But if you if you hand make a dress a, with a sewing machine at home, it's handmade, right? So, anyways, I digress. Um, this is how they stitch the sti the speedy inside out. Okay, so just by looking at this and what I can tell you about my experience in manufacturing, other brands, other companies, like I've seen denim factories where they turn out this denim as quickly as they can. So Vuitton has uh, much smaller quotas for the amount of bags made per day. It does allow them to work a little bit slower, uh, still keeping with the guidelines of how many stitches each Speedy should have. So there is more meticulous attention to detail with this type of factory compared to like denim factories and other factories I have been where they really have to churn bigger quantities of product. So it looks like she's, you know, sewing several, which then will go on to the next person to do the next part. Um, it looks like she's also just stitching the seams of the bag. It looks like the zipper and the tabs, they were placed on somewhere else in the line. So definitely she's not doing all of that. She is really just doing one job on the sewing machine. She might be the same person that is sewing on the leather, which means she would get up and go to the station where they are sewing the leather. Um, another fun thing we saw at the factory, not just the traditional Speedy, as people call it, the monogram canvas Speedy. Um, this was in 2019, so it was right when uh, Virgil Abloh launched the iridescent clear see-through key ball, what we call the unicorn. Very, very hard to get at the time. So this was where that key ball was made. I mean, I don't believe this was the only factory that was making it. And they did tell us that the quota on this was 12 per day. That was how many of these bags they physically could make per day was 12. Now, if you look at the materials here, and I'm very familiar with this PVC because it is something we used in shoes. It's a very, very thick plastic. And the price of um, this material uh, on the lines of, I believe like $30 per yard is what I want to say. And it's probably a little bit more now, but they do emboss it with the Vuitton logo. You can see some pieces here before they're assembled. And this type of bag, the reason they can only make 12 per day because it definitely takes a lot more um, sewing carefulness and skill. So the stitching of this would be not as quick as speedy. It would more be like dut, 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 dut to make sure that no stitch was off because obviously with the PVC bag, you cannot unstitch and restitch. It would definitely show. So definitely more attention put to this bag. If you didn't notice, the bag has a vachetta handle. So this was the sample that they have. So each bay has a sample, like a sample, an example of what the bag should look like. And um, the first samples of this bag actually had a vachetta handle and vachetta tabs. I don't know what happened to that, but that's what they had on the, um, the factory floor as the example bag to follow. Obviously in the bags that went to the stores, they do not have vachetta handles or vachetta tab. It's completely the iridescent PVC all over the bag. Highly sought after when I was there and now I see it for resale everywhere. Do not expect to find the factory and stand outside and get in. The factory is not even marked that it is Louis Vuitton property. So don't stand outside expecting to get in. There is very, 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 very tight security to get in and very tight security to get out. So as um, employees and guests of the factory, we did have to go through this of, um, security, emptying our pockets. Uh, we had to declare everything we were going in with, put, um, put our handbags and bags in, like they kept it in a bin that the workers can't bring with them. That way you can't like, you know, accidentally put a luggage tag in your handbag and walk away with it. So same on the way out, when the day is over, the, the employees have to line up. They're searched on their way in and searched on their way out and operations are very, very tight. So I had told you in the video how every piece of material is cut to precision. Well, every single item is accounted for, so there are no leftovers. There really are no leftovers. And if something happens to get messed up, 
I, I think they throw it away. They slash it and they throw it away. So tell me guys, how do you feel after seeing that this is the way that your bags are made? Are you intrigued? Is it what you expected? Let me know in the comments. I will have a part two about quality control. There's a whole separate building about the service center and quality control and other good stuff. If you're to this point of the video guys, thank you so much for watching. My name's Michelle, talk to you soon, bye.